Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate multinomial logistic regression using SPSS. And uh, yesterday I put together a video on uh, this topic with Stata and I was using um, survey data from the Pew Research Center um, from March of 2020. So uh, some of the questions that were asked uh, of participants was uh, concerning their perceptions of the COVID-19 crisis that's currently going on. So I thought I would just continue that with uh, this particular demonstration using uh, SPSS. So before we get started, let me note that I've prepared a data set, uh, an SPSS data set, uh, that you can download at a link that is provided underneath the video description. Uh, you will also find underneath the video description a link to a PowerPoint that provides a lot more detail than I'm going to be covering in this video presentation. And in particular, it will offer a, a bit of a deeper dive with respect to interpretation of the results. So for our demonstration, we will be examining predictors of respondents' perceptions of the COVID-19 virus as a threat to their personal health. So the dependent variable in our data set is this COVIDthreat.ph variable that you see right here, and it is coded zero, COVID-19 is not a threat to personal health, one, COVID-19 is a minor threat to personal health, and two, COVID-19 is a major threat to personal health. The predictors in the model include gender identification, which is indicated by the female ID variable, and it's coded zero for identified as male, one for identified as female. We have this COVID made up variable right here, which indicates how much uh, news and information uh, concerning COVID-19 respondents believe to uh, be made up. So the COVID made up variable ranges from zero, not at all, to three, a lot. We have an age category variable that you see right here, and it is coded zero for persons 18 to 29, one for persons 30 to 49, two for persons uh, 50 to 64, and then three for persons 65 plus. And then finally, we have an education level variable that is given in our data set as well. And this ranges from zero, did not graduate high school, to five, uh, being postgraduate. So for this demonstration, what I decided to do was to take the age uh, cat variable and uh, dummy code it. So we're, we're going to have com each dummy coded variable will represent comparisons between individuals in the 18 to 29 age group. This is going to serve as a baseline category. And then those in the 30 to 49 age group, uh, those in the 50 to 64 age group, and then those uh, in the 65 plus age group. So these are our dummy variables in the data set that you see right here. Now I also want to mention that multinomial logistic regression is typically used when you have a categorical uh, dependent variable, typically a nominal dependent variable, but you can also use it in the context of ordinal uh, when you have an ordered categorical outcome variable. Uh, preferably uh, if you have an ordered categorical variable uh, as your DV, you might uh, opt for ordinal logistic regression instead of multinomial logistic regression. However, if the proportional odds assumption associated with the ordinal logistic regression is not met, then it makes more sense to use multinomial logistic regression. So I did some preliminary analyses, and in fact, when I was putting together uh, another presentation using Stata, um, I found that proportional odds assumption to be uh, violated. So that's why we're sticking with this approach here despite the fact that the dependent variable may be considered ordered categorical. Okay, so here I've opened up SPSS, and what I'm going to do, uh, first off, we'll just look at our variables. There's COVID threat, female ID, age category uh, variable. There's our education level variable, COVID made up. Then the age 30 to 49 uh, dummy variable, age 50 to 64 dummy variable, and age 65 plus dummy variable. So what we're going to do is go to analyze regression and then go down to multinomial logistic uh, regression. We'll move the COVID, uh, the COVID threat variable to the dependent variable box. And by default, it's going to select the, the last group uh, as a reference category. So the last group for the COVID threat variable uh, happens to be the major threat category. So if I want to reset this, I can. I'm going to reset this to first category to make the not a threat group uh, my reference or baseline category. Next, I will move my, um, my COVID made up variable to the co covariates box. There's female ID. I'm going to move it there. I'm going to go ahead and move the um, 
the uh, binary variables down to the covariates box. I know those are uh, technically uh, categorical, but as long as we have a binary predictor, we can include it under the covariates box with no problem. And then I'm going to move the education level down to the covariates box as well. So uh, if I select statistics, uh, some of the usual things that I will select include the information criteria, here's classification table, and goodness of fit uh, measures. So we'll go ahead and click on continue and uh, press OK, and we can look at our output. So you'll notice first off, uh, you know, we have the case processing summary with our um, various descriptions of um, our data and so forth. Then you've got a model of fitting information uh, here and then also uh, in terms of the uh, a general goodness of fit uh, measure right here and then also pseudo R square right here. So these three uh, pieces of information right here are relevant for evaluating the overall fit of the model. Uh, and then we can scroll down, you can see that we have a likelihood ratio test concerning each of the predictors and then you've got the regression uh, parameters that are given under the parameter estimates table. And then finally at the very end you can see that we have a classification table. So at this point, uh, let me walk through some of our output. So this portion of the output uh, contains results from a likelihood ratio test comparing the fit of the model with the complete set of predictors with an intercept only or null model. So uh, if it's significant, you can infer that at least one population regression slope uh, in our model is significantly different from zero. So based on our likelihood ratio test, we can say that the model containing the full set of predictors represents a significant improvement in fit relative to the null model, and we can infer that at least one population slope is non-zero. Okay, so this portion of the output uh, contains pseudo R squares, and these indices are not computed in the same way that you would uh, compute R square in the context of least squares regression. So you can't interpret uh, the R, the pseudo R squares as now as the same thing as proportion of variance accounted for. Uh, nevertheless, you might think of these in, these indices as representing uh, something akin to the proportion improvement in model fit relative to the null model. So what I've selected right here or identified is uh, the McFadden pseudo R square. This is one of the more preferred alternatives. Um, and so again, you can think about this as an index of the proportionate of improvement in model fit relative to a null model. So you can see that based on McFadden's, we might say that our full model containing our predictors represents a 5.8% improvement in fit relative to the null model. Okay, so these are some additional chi-square goodness of fit tests for the model. Now, unlike the likelihood ratio tests that we looked at before, uh, when these models are non-significant, that these are taken as indicators that we have a well-fitting model. So you can see that uh, the results from uh, these tests do not always necessarily agree. Uh, our Pearson's chi-square uh, test is non-significant, which suggests a good fitting model, whereas the deviance chi-square test suggests the opposite. And if you open up the uh, PowerPoint and go to this slide, uh, you'll see that I give you a link uh, to a paper that's written by Allison uh, that uh, gives you a little bit more detail concerning these two indices. Okay, so these are likelihood ratio chi-square tests that can be considered omnibus tests of uh, the effect of each independent variable in the model. So you can see, just looking at this, that in terms of the significant predictors, we have the COVID made up uh, that's given. You've got the female ID variable that's uh, given as significant. You've got the age 65 plus dummy variable, and then you've also got education level uh, being statistically significant for the model. Uh, so before we go to the regression coefficients, uh, I just wanted to briefly point out the classification table. So this portion of the output is going to give you an indication about how well the model is performing in correctly predicting category membership on the dependent variable. So the classification accuracy for a given category is, is represented in the row percentages. So you can see, for instance, looking at our table, uh, that we've got uh, the observed outcome for not a threat and then what is predicted. So in terms of the not a threat outcome, we had 17 individuals um, out of this entire row that were correctly predicted by the model. So that gives us an accuracy rate of 8.1%. We also have, uh, for the minor threat, um, uh, outcome, 
537 individuals were correctly predicted uh, to fall into that category, giving us an accuracy rate of 91.2%. And then the uh, major threat outcome, you can see that 42 individuals out of uh, all of those that were observed to um, reflect a major threat, uh, basically giving us 16.6% .6 classification accuracy. So you can see that the overall classification accuracy for the model is 56.6, which is not uh, particularly good if we were trying to predict uh, the likelihood of falling into um, our respective categories on the dependent variable. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at uh, our regression uh, table. So this first section allows us to determine which of the independent variables significantly predict whether a person falls into the minor threat category, the comparison group, versus the not a threat uh, or baseline category. So looking first at our uh, COVID made up predictor, you can see that uh, we have a negative regression slope and it is statistically significant. We also see uh, under the EXPB uh, column, these are referred to as odds ratios. In SETA, they're referring to these in, as uh, relative risk ratios. Um, but uh, you can see that this value right here is less than one. And as I said before, download the PowerPoint so because I give you a lot more detail concerning how to go through each of these interpretations. But the results um, that are indicated here uh, suggest that persons believing more strongly that news concerning COVID-19 is made up are at lower risk of believing the disease is a minor threat uh, than persons who believe less that news concerning the disease is made up. The female ID predictor, on the other hand, is positive and significant, and the odds ratio is greater than one. Uh, so what this basically indicates is that females are at greater risk of believing the disease is a minor threat as compared to males. And the education level predictor is positive and statistically significant. Uh, again, the odds ratio uh, will be greater than one in this case. And uh, these results indicate that persons with more education are at greater risk of believing COVID-19 is a minor threat uh, to personal health than those with less education. Now, since the age cat variable was uh, treated as categorical, each category uh, that's shown represents the dummy variable that I've created, comparing an older category versus the younger, youngest category. So although the slopes for all three dummy variables were positive, only the last dummy variable was significant. So this result indicates that persons aged 65 plus are predicted to be at greater risk of falling into the minor threat group and uh, essentially at a lower risk of falling into the not a threat group as compared to persons aged 18 to 29. Okay, so our next section uh, in the regression table allows us to determine which of the independent variables significantly predict the risk of a person belonging to the major threat category versus the no th threat category. And uh, let me just take a quick side note and note that my language of the of the term using the term risk uh, is not to imply that uh, one category is uh, dangerous or threatening or, or inherently bad. We're just talking. We can use uh, other terms such as likelihood or, pro or probability instead of risk. So looking at the COVID made up predictor, we see it's once again negative and significant. Uh, indicating that persons holding greater belief that news and information concerning the disease is made up are lower at risk of believing COVID-19 is a major threat as compared with persons who less strongly believe COVID-19 news is made up. The female ID predictor is positive and significant and uh, this result indicates that females are at greater risk of viewing the disease as a major threat as compared to males. And then with respect to the education level predictor, we see it is negative and significant. So previously it was positive and significant when we were trying to predict uh, whether a person indicated um, that it was a minor threat versus not a threat. In this case, it's a negative and, predictive, negative and significant predictor. So this suggests that persons with more education are at lower risk of believing COVID-19 is a major threat as compared with persons with less education. And once again, although the slopes for all three dummy variables were positive, only the last dummy variable was significant. And this indicates that persons aged 65 plus are predicted to be at greater risk of falling into the uh, major threat group, it should say major threat, as compared to persons aged 18 to, to 29. So uh, you can also see I've just create, uh, uh, fixed that in the PowerPoint. 
So uh, at this point, that uh, pretty well concludes this demonstration of multinomial logistic regression using IBM SPSS. And it's my hope that you will all be healthy and safe uh, in the days ahead. So uh, thank you for watching.